The year was 1974, and Lou Brock broke the Major League stolen base record at 105, eventually went on to steal a record-breaking 118. There are wings here in St. Louis now in the person of Vince Coleman, who has a bad habit of stealing head first. Last night, he jammed a wrist. He will not play today. However, there are other Redbirds. Case in point, the league's leading RBI man, second baseman Tommy Herr, and Willie McGee, the number one hitter in the National League. The birds are high flying, and they're playing the Dodgers on the NBC Game of the Week. presents the Major League Baseball Game of the Week. Today, from Bush Memorial Stadium, it's the Los Angeles Dodgers versus the St. Louis Cardinals. The Game of the Week is brought to you by Ford, who invites you to drive the new Ford Escort. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Meisterbrow, the beer that only tastes expensive. By AT&T. In long-distance services, information systems, telephones, and computers, AT&T is the right choice. And by Move Cargo Coils, the car springs that smooth the road and carry the load. From Bush Memorial Stadium in St. Louis, Missouri, the NBC Game of the Week in 90-degree weather, the Los Angeles Dodgers and Bob Welsh against the high-flying St. Louis Cardinals and Kurt Kepshire. Hi, everybody. I'm Vin Scully, along with Joe Garagiola, and the news in the ballpark is one of the wings fell off. Vince Coleman hurt his wrist last night, and he will not be in the starting lineup for the St. Louis Cardinals. And a tip-off on how disruptive he can be. With him out of the lineup, Lasorda has changed his lineup. Socha is now replacing Jaeger. So the Dodgers get an extra left-handed bat in there with Coleman out. However, the Cardinals, not only a team that figure to be fifth in history in stealing over 300 bases, they can beat you more than just running. Well, they, they lose speed in Coleman, but they still have McGee, of course. They have Clark and Herr, good hitters. And that bullpen and their pitching, it's, it will really show how well-balanced the Cardinals are. Just to give you an idea, you want to discount speed for a moment, the Cardinals recently swept a series from the Chicago Cubs, and in the entire series... They only stole two bases, so your point is well taken. And also in this ballpark, they're pretty tough. They're tough indeed. They have the best record in the league at home. Had an eight-game streak snapped last night. We'll get to the starting lineups and have more all coming up right after this. The Dodgers stack up offensively, leading off at third base, Dave Anderson. At shortstop, the switch-hitting youngster, Mariano Duncan. In center field hitting third, Kenny Landro. The big hitter in the Dodger arsenal after a magnificent month of June, Pedro Guerrero in left field. In Guerrero's shadow and yet swinging the bat better than at any time in his Dodger career, first baseman Greg Brock. In right field, another Dodger switch hitter, R.J. Reynolds. Behind the plate, probably because of the absence of Vince Coleman, is Mike Socia. At second base, Steve Sachs, and the pitcher, Bob Welsh. Meanwhile, here's the way the Cardinals stack up behind Kepshire. Well, with Coleman out of there, uh, Braun will be in left field. Willie McGee, and uh, he, he has to have that kind of speed to cover this big center field here. Van Slyke is in right field. Pendleton, who came up with a tremendous play the other day, uh, is at third base. Smith, what can you say about Ozzy? A real magician. Two fine plays last night. Tommy Herr is at second base. Jack Clark at first base. Nieto is the catcher, and Kepshire is the pitcher. Kurt Kepshire started the year two and five, and has rebounded nicely to win his last three and balance his books at five and five. In a sense, his close buddy Danny Cox and Kepshire should have switched birthplaces. 
Danny Cox was born in Northampton, England. Kepshire was born in Connecticut. <laughs> but it really, wouldn't it be nicer if I could say Kurt Kepshire is from Northampton? Well, let's change it. Make it a designated city. <laughs> okay. So Kepshire getting ready, and he'll be pitching to Anderson, Duncan, and Landro. He doesn't have any trick pitches. He's a hard thrower, good fastball. His catcher says that he has to have a slider working for him to set up that fastball and throws a change of pace. His move to first base is average, a little slow in delivery towards the plate, so I would imagine he's suspect as far as running. And by the way, I'm sure there are a lot of you folks who are expecting to get the Atlanta Mets game. And needless to say, and sorry to say, the Mets-Atlanta game was rained out. So you'll be looking at the divisional leaders of the East, the St. Louis Cardinals, and the second-place team in the West. Dave Anderson hitting 194. Lifts a fly ball to right center, and Andy Van Slyke is there. One away. that cap of Paul Rungi is a cabbage leaf. Uh, Bob Engel looks like he might have uh, wanted to do the same thing. That's really from the old school then where you have to cool. It, uh, it's nature's way of air conditioning. I remember ball players doing that. Some of them doing it to cool themselves and others for protection. Well, you know, he probably had the cabbage leaf in Los Angeles. He worked the last series there when temperatures were up in 107. Here he is in St. Louis where it's around 90. So like most people, we have come to St. Louis to cool off. A bunt by Duncan. If it stays fair, he's going to leg it out. It is tipping. It is staying fair. And Duncan is going to keep on going. That's going to be his third bunt double of the year. What a tremendous play by Duncan. He was playing cat and mouse, and he realized that he had gotten a big enough lead that by the time they picked it up, he was going to make it. He caught him, he burned him, and he burned him with a double. The other two bunt doubles that he had are when the second baseman overran the bunt. But in this one, he just stole the extra base. And I can't really uh, fault the Cardinals because it looked like it was going to roll foul. There was no way they were going to get him at first base. He has a double, and I guess Lasort is right in looking for a bunt triple. Well, maybe one of these days he'll get it. Here's a strike to Kenny Landro. So with one out in the first inning, Mariano Duncan dumps a bunt double. Landro followed by Guerrero. Kenny hitting 240. Four home runs, 17 RBI. One ball, one strike. With Duncan at second base, it's interesting to point out that Sachs, Duncan, and Anderson together have just four home runs and 18 RBIs and almost 500 at-bats. So the Dodgers are not getting production from three of the four infielders. Greg Brock, however, is doing a great job. Good slow curveball. I have yet to find out how you can doctor the artificial surface to keep a ball fair or foul. You know, with the grass, you can let it grow. You can paint the foul line with a couple extra layers. If there's a way, in. he'd have thought of it. Whitey would have thought of it. I don't know how you could do it. And it looked like the spin was going to take it foul, but it did not. So Duncan at second, one out. Pull up a chair and spend part of Saturday with us. Stroked into right field for a base hit. Van Slyke has the ball. Kangaroo over his head. It'll go to the wall. Duncan scores. Landro is waved to third. He's being waved in. The relay by Tommy Herr. He scores. Home run inside the park. And it's the Dodgers who are doing the running. Andy Van Slyke bitten by that kangaroo he was going to charge that ball to make the play at the plate on uh, Mariano Duncan. It got over his head, and McGee has to retrieve it. He hits the cutoff, man. Tommy Herr in good shape. Herr's got a good throw, but Landro Steve beats the play easily. It is a completely different game, needless to say, playing on AstroTurf. This is the AstroTurf hop. I tell you, it really is a different ball game. It's like playing on a bowling alley. So it is two to nothing in favor of the Dodgers. Kenny Landro getting a home run inside the park, his fifth home run of the year. And now Guerrero. You know, when you look at it, Ben, they're really two mental errors, but 
you can't really call them mental errors because that ball looked like it was going to roll foul. Van Slyke, if he doesn't charge the ball, has no possible play. One and one. By the way, that's only the second inside the park home run in Bush Stadium this year. Vince Coleman has the other one. So Kenny's right there with a rabbit. One and one to Guerrero, who hit 16 home runs in the month of June, and he hammers it to left center. That's a one-hopper up into the bleachers for a ground rule double. Guerrero, who had never hit more than five home runs in a month, look what he did in June with his 615. He had 16 home runs all last year. I had to laugh when Lasorda said he took all the calendars out of the clubhouse, and all he has is June calendars. And when you ask Guerrero what the day is, he said it's June 36. <laughs> well, the Dodgers leading two to nothing. Kurt Kepshire being roughed up. You join us late. Anderson flied to right. Duncan laid down a bunt. And while the Cardinals were judging whether it was going to go fair or foul, Duncan ran for a double. And then Landro hits a single that bounces over Van Slyke's head for an inside the park home run. And Whitey Herzog is wondering what kind of a day is this going to be with Mike Rourke. Rourke, his pitching coach. Here is Greg Brock hitting 251. Back. Brock hitting in the shadow or the glare of Guerrero has had nine hits in his last 20 at bats, including two home runs and five RBIs. A year ago, he was back in Albuquerque. Now he's trying to pick up Guerrero. Slyke, however, got the bounce, so Guerrero will hold at third. So Brock, who had a five-game hitting streak snapped last night, goes right back to work with a base hit. Another reason why they held Guerrero, he has been bothered by bad knees, and with one out and a switch hitter Reynolds coming up, they played it conservatively. So Kepshire has given up a single, a bad hop, Inside the park home run, a ground rule double, and a bunt that double. Six, number it's like Disneyland here. The only ball that really wasn't hammered, obviously, was the bunt, and they're getting some pretty good cuts. Brock on that very first pitch, as we look at Campbell go to the bullpen, uh, Brock had a real good cut at a high fastball. Uh, so far, Kepshire has not been able to fool him. So Bill Campbell throwing back of Kepshire, and here's Reynolds. RJ in last night's game had a key triple to pick up one and then he scored the other and he's hitting 273. He's a very consistent switch hitter in the sense he's almost the same from either side of the plate. He's hitting 274 left-handed, 271 right-handed. He is a very good bunter, although I don't think they will employ any bunt now. Foul ball out of play. Two years ago, in 1983, and I'm sure the people in Atlanta and Los Angeles will remember, the Dodgers won a clutch game late in September against the Braves on a squeeze bunt by R.J. Reynolds, and the man he squeezed in was Pedro Guerrero. 0-2. Time by plate umpire Steve Ripley. in for the Dodgers. 0-2 the count to Reynolds with runners at first and third. Down he goes. The Kepshire battling for survival. Strikes out Reynolds. And now Mike Socia coming up. Betting seventh, number 14, catcher Mike Socia. Socia hitting 257. The big thing with Mike, he is a contact hitter. He has only struck out 10 times all year. That's about 5% of his at-bats. When you're able to do that on artificial surface, you're a good hitter. If he had any kind of speed at all, he would really have an excellent average. But being a catcher, he pays the price. All those squats and knee bends sooner or later takes it out of you, doesn't it? You had to say for well, a catcher. Well, I'm, I'm back to life, huh? <laughs> Brock at first and Guerrero at third. 2-0. Daryl Porter has been on the disabled list for the Cardinals, talking about catchers. He's going to Louisville to get himself back into shape. 
So the catchers are Tom Nieto and another youngster, Randy Hunt. 2-0 to Mike Sosha. And he drives it to right. Van Slyke took a step in, and it's going to be off the wall. Guerrero scores. Sosha to second. Brock coming to the plate. The throw, he is out from me to you. Ozzie Smith is the relay man to cut him down. But the Dodgers add another. And at the end of half an inning, the Dodgers three. The Cardinals coming up. Here's that play again. And Board, who catches love this, he's got plenty of time. Look at Brock. No chance to get in. And Nieto's got it blocked off. And Brock says, well, at least let me touch the plate when it's over. And he drops his hand right on it. But it's a bit too late. You love those kind of tags, man. I know. Well, the Cardinals can play tag with you. That's why they're in first place. And here's the way they go offensively. Willie McGee in center field. And Terry Pendleton has moved up to the number two slot. Tommy Herr at second base. And Jack Clark, the power hitter at first. Andy Van Slyke in right. Steve Braun is playing for the injured Vince Coleman, who has a jammed wrist. Ozzie Smith at short, batting seventh. The catcher is Tom Nieto. The pitcher, Kurt Kepshire. And on the mound for the Dodgers, Bob Welsh. Bob one and one, five and five lifetime with the Cardinals. They beat him twice last year. He's had, among other things, a bad elbow. A chopper to Brock. And that disposes of McGee, who is leading the league at 348. One away. Defensively, the Dodgers have Guerrero in left field, Landro in center field, R.J. Reynolds in right field. It's Anderson and Duncan at shortstop. Last night, I thought he had a tremendous game. He really showed great flashes. Sacks at second, and Brock, who Ben, I think, is an underrated defensive first baseman. He made a good play again last night. Behind the plate is Socia, and if you want to see some tags at the plate, if he gets one, you're going to see a human dead end in action. And he really blocks that plate. And Bob Welsh, no trick pitches. He rears back and fires. Good fastball, slider, curveball, changes speed. Here's Terry Pendleton. Ball one. Pendleton has tremendous thighs. He is only five feet nine inches tall. I think he really would be six four if he ever loosened up those thighs. And the other night he made a game-saving leaping catch. He must have been a good three feet off the ground to catch a line drive hit by Pedro Guerrero. He's a little guy who tore his leg up, and it's our pet peeve. In the modern-day ballpark, they put the bullpens where they can actually interfere with a ball in play and injure a player. He went after a ball and tripped over the mound in the bullpen. And why they would ever put brand-new bullpens in brand-new ballparks in a place where they can maim a player, I'll never understand, but they've done it. And Pendleton was on the DL for almost three weeks because of it. Hitting 233. Not much power. The outfield plays him shallow. And he pops it back a short to Duncan. So two down in the first inning. Duncan, the second youngest in the National League behind Dwight Gooden. The youngest, of course, is Manny Lee over in the American League. I just want to put a, like a footnote to what you said. I agree with you 150% on those bullpens, but at least the players in opposite bullpens will help the guy because they know that that mound is there as we look at the batting leaders. And you can see two fellas who don't need any help, Willie McGee and Tom Herr, 1-2 in the league. And, of course, the Cardinals are doing so well now that when you come to St. Louis or read about the Cardinals, it's like looking at a history book. The last Cardinals that went 1-2 batting back in 25, Rogers Hornsby and then Jim Bottomley. And in 1937, Joe Medwick and then Johnny Mize. A drive to left field, Guerrero back and over to his right. So the Cardinals go out one, two, three, and at the end of an inning, the Dodgers three, and the Cardinals nothing. As you look at Tommy Lasorda, it's interesting to note that in each of Lasorda's eight previous years as manager, the Dodgers had out-homered the opposition. Why we bring that up is on the road, the Dodgers have out-homered the opposition better than two to one for whatever reason. The Dodgers have hit 41 home runs on the road, now 42 with the inside of the park, and the opposition has only hit 19. Yet when they go home to Dodger Stadium, the Dodgers have been out-homered at home, as you see Landro, who's responsible for making it 42. 
Steve Sachs, Bob Welsh, and Dave Anderson. Sachs hitting 238. Ball one, one and all. He's hit in six of his last seven. He's really been hurting after two consecutive years where he hit 280. He tailed off to 240 last year, and he's been down to 220 this year. He's really getting the stroke down of going to the opposite field, though. He's getting a lot of hits from center field to right field. He has really been going that way with Ben Hines working with him. And this time he pulls, and he hits it pretty deep. Braun going back and handles it. The Sacks hit that about 370, one away. And Bob Welch to batter, so Kepshire is still pretty rocky. This telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. Here's Welch. Bob has two hits, one RBI this year. Considering he has only six at-bats, that means he's hitting 333, and he adds to that. I'm going to say he's a pretty good hitting pitcher. Now he's three for seven. And for Kepshire, he's given up a half a dozen hits in an inning and a third. I have to laugh because they were starting to run a jacket out there. He put a jacket out there. You'd have to wonder because as Casey Stengel once said at the All-Star game, this ballpark holds the heat good. Yeah, it really it leads the league in heat. <laughs> Here's Anderson fly to right in the first inning. You know, we did the other day here, it was Thursday, and the temperature was about 85 to 90. And we took what looked like the thing you'd stick in a turkey, you know, to get the temperature, yeah. and we stuck it in the astroturf in front of the Cardinal dugout, and it got up to 115, like that, within a minute and a half, as Mike Rourke goes out to the mound. So no matter what they tell you about the temperature, it might be 85 to 90 here in St. Louis, but out on that rug, it's another story. Having grown up here, it gets warm. Oh, boy. So Kurt Kepshire, in looking at his last outing, his shortest outing was his most recent one, and Whitey knows he went six innings and only allowed two earned runs. That was against Montreal. He did not have a decision. He had won three straight, and he's had a no decision on either side of the streak. But he's been roughed up a little here. Three nothing Dodgers on a half a dozen hits. And here's Anderson. Ball one. Bob Welsh is not the strongest of people. And of all the Dodger pitchers, running the bases in the heat could take more out of him than anybody else. Well, he's not taking much of a lead. I mean, it's one step back. He's still on the dirt part. And that's as far as he gets. 2-0. Kepshire is hanging by his fingernails. I think two good swings by Anderson and he might be out of there. Anderson hit the ball fairly hard in the first inning. Went to right to Andy Van Slyke. Three and one. You know, talking about heat, the Cardinals got hot on June the 7th four weekends ago, and it was great timing because that was the day in the National League when they began three and a half streak weeks of playing within their own division. And in those games, the Cardinals won 18 out of 24, sweeping the Cubs and Mets, and they took over first place. And now Whitey Herzog has had enough as we take a look at that bunt by Duncan. This really started it. Now, it looks like it's going to roll foul. Look at edging towards the line. Now, it doesn't really ever hit that uh, white line, so there's no ledge there to help it, and it cost him a double. The beginning of the end for Kurt Kepshire, and enough is enough, says Whitey Herzog. The Dodgers in the bullpen having a little fun. That's Carlos Diaz. They just put an ice cube down the back of his pants. He's from Hawaii, wearing a towel and sunglasses at Babo Castillo. There was Diaz a few moments ago, the Hawaiian visiting with the Mexican, Fernando Valenzuela, in the heat in St. Louis. At Castillo from East Los Angeles, also with a towel. Bill Campbell on the hill. Strike to Mariano Duncan. Campbell is 2-1. and one. He has three saves. It's interesting to point out, Bruce Souter has 15 saves for Atlanta. The Cardinal bullpen has 19 saves. So sure, anybody would miss Souter, but they're doing well without him. Little nubber. Nieto has to hurry. Just did get him. Boy, 
he took a lot of time like he really almost forgot who was running but uh, once he got that arm cocked he really put something on it he makes sure now it's topped in front of the plate he's not sure Campbell's not going to get it once he gets it he took a look at third and now he put something on it just does nip Duncan or Doran rather so Mariano Duncan Duncan what am I got Doran down here who am I thinking of Tell me, quickly. Bull Durham? Bail me out. <laughs> uh, Here's Kenny Landro. Hit that bad hop inside the park home run in the first inning. Dodgers three runs on a half a dozen hits. Here's that AstroTurf bounce. Up you go. And now the chase is on. delivery he really has a hesitation pitch you watch that right arm it bends and then it just seems to hang as his body strides towards the plate you don't hear the expression much anymore but it's herky-jerky that's what it is because it's very deceptive and if you really are not concentrating on that ball you can be in trouble following that motion oh and two and he wild pitches it but it comes right back to Nieto he dies is out at the plate on the best comebacker this side of a schoolyard. Let's take another look not only at the pitch but watch the comebacker. It looked like he was looking for a curveball. It hits that uh, break down there and look at this. I'll give you an idea the distance from home plate to that backstop wall is 65 feet that ball had a bounce back off the wall 40 to 45 feet and perfectly back to Nieto yeah, this is kind of a remarkable beginning isn't it? Uh, <laughs> full moon day it really is it's a Halloween day everything is happening Nieto looked like he was crossed up you could see his right knee give like he was looking for a breaking ball into Landro and when it hits that uh, curbing or whatever is there comes right back to him Landro thought that Welch was in there but he screened us out of the play but I'll say this Nieto pretty good dive well now let's figure out just what's happened so far in an inning and a half we've had a bunt double we've had an inside the park home run on an AstroTurf bounce We've had a wild pitch that turns out as a put out at home plate unassisted by the catcher. Otherwise, nothing at all. You don't have that many plays in the pinball game if the fuse goes. Well, here we go. And these are big Lakers. <laughs> I can't wait for you to read the disclaimer. <laughs> About written permission? Yeah. Well, look at Jack Clark. He doesn't need written permission. With 15 home runs, he is number three in the league. A lot of the pitchers in the National League are understandably pitching around him. He has 49 walks. He'll wind up getting 100 walks. And in St. Louis, they are saying that was the best deal since 1967. Curveball for a strike. In 1967, the Cardinals traded Ray Sadecki to the Giants for Orlando Cepeda. Two, two and one. We had a family game beforehand. There's Jack with his children, Rebecca, Danica, and Anthony. The dads and the kids had a lot of fun. Clark came here in a four for one deal. The people involved, Dave LaPointe, Jose Uribe Gonzalez, David Green, and Gary Dragis. Whitey Herzog said when they made that deal, this will be a more important and a better deal, our four for one for Clark, than the Mets four for one for Gary Carter. Remains to be seen. Two and two. All three. So Bob Welch, five and five lifetime against the Big Bird, Jack Clark. They're really playing Clark deep. Uh, shortstop Duncan is beyond the line, and at third base, uh, Anderson is making sure he's back. Take a good look at how far the shortstop is playing and how far over they are playing him the pull. Three and two. And there's another walk. That's 50 walks for Jack Clark so far this year. Clark is also that figuring is on hitting number 18, right fielder 30 home runs to go with all those walks. 
and he'd be the first Cardinal to do that since Dick Allen in 1970. So he's a big man here. He is, and Whitey he really minimizes the trade. He simply says, when I asked him, he said, if you ever get a chance to get a player like Clark, you get him. Amen. You know why he got him, so Whitey could sleep better at night. You know what Clark has done? Career against the Cardinals, 333. Last year, Clark hit 545 against St. Louis. That's why he traded for him. <laughs> Andy Van Slyke pops it up. It'll be Mariano Duncan. Mr. Ricky had that great expression on those deals, addition by subtraction. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what he did. He added a man, and he subtracted a lot of sleepless nights. Now with one out, Paul Braun coming up, playing in place. I'm sorry, Steve Braun. And Braun playing for Vince Coleman. Steve was a a very successful pinch hitter for Whitey in Kansas City. So it's it's no accident that he's over here with Whitey now. Trying to move Clark from first. He has 105 pinch hits. Manny Mota, of course, holds the record with 150. Fly ball to right field, R.J. Reynolds. So two down. The Wizard of Oz coming up, Ozzie Smith. Ozzie Smith is having a fine year, but as they say here in St. Louis, he better. When you look at his contract, you realize he has a lot of pressure to perform. He's not a player. He is the gross national product. Is what he and this backs up what you're saying. His contract calls for $8.7 million over four years. He got a $700,000 signing bonus. He got a $500,000 loan at 10% when the prime was up around 13 or 14. And he got a wholesale beer distributorship. And if he wasn't going to get the beer distributorship, he was going to ask $3 million per year. High foul behind the plate. Socia coming back. And he'll blow the head right off that beer distributorship. So they leave Clark. And at the end of two... The Dodgers 3, Cardinals nothing. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Vince was the 20th round draft choice of the Philadelphia Phillies in 1980, and as we understand it, they offered him $10,000 bonus plus an incentive bonus of $7,500 if he reached the big leagues, and Vince said, no thanks, I'm going back to Florida A&M. And then he was drafted by the Cardinals, and he's setting the world on fire. And how fast is he? Mickey Mantle, 3-1 from the left side on the bunt. Our Steve Dance in the game he had clocked him at 3-6 from the right side. Landro drills it down the right field line, hooking foul. I asked him about that yesterday, and he said, 3-6, is that right? I said, yeah, are you surprised? He said, well, I've never been clocked like that. I said, well, are you the fastest guy in your neighborhood? And I really think that Willie Wilson put me on by saying he wasn't. He said he wasn't the fastest guy, that his cousin, who's the punter for the Minnesota Vikings, was faster than him. I read a note about Vince Coleman I couldn't believe, and maybe you can't believe it either. In 1983, playing for Macon, he stole 145 bases. But here's the thing. He missed 31 games. Strike. Oh, and two. We might see him today before the day is over as a pinch runner. I looked at his shoes today when I went in the locker room. They're, they're the same as anybody else's. Yeah, I noticed last night he had to stop to tie his laces. I thought a wing had fallen off. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, vapor trails get off when he runs. It's a shame he got hurt. We can't see him today. Change lifted foul off third. Pendleton hustling down the line, but it's out of play. There they are. They look normal, but when he runs, sparks come off. Mm. And look at those stirrups. They used to say it about Frank Robinson. When you look at his stockings, it looks like he jumped out of a five-story window to pull him up that high. You could probably play the banjo with them. They're like rubber bands. Yep. He likes loose ankles. 3-0 Dodgers, top of the third. Landro, Guerrero, and Brock. And Landro drives it to right. If that's fair, it's gone. It's gone. Landro can take his time going around him this time.
the Dodgers the bulk of their home runs this year. They have 62 and 47 of them have come with the bases empty. So they're getting the minimum out of the maximum. Left fielder Pedro Guerrero. Looks like a fastball about belt high. A little bit poured inside the plate. Boom. And Campbell knows it's gone. Look at Nieto and certainly Landro knew it. 4-0 Dodgers. Side-arming Guerrero. And that's the way they're pitching him in this series. They're trying to prevent the slugger from full extension of the arms. They're keeping an awful lot of pitches in on the hands to him. He had never hit more than five in a month in his life. And look at his June. It's the third time in Landro's career he's hit two home runs in a game. The last time, three years ago, he did it against Atlanta. Rick Mailer and Steve Bedrosian. One and one to Pedro Guerrero. Now there's Kenny with Terry Whitfield talking to him. Out of the way, one and two. By the way, this week's NBC Light Beer from Miller Player of the Game Award will be made a little bit later on. And of course, right now, there's a leading candidate. Kenny Landro. Sidearm breaking ball just low. So Campbell coming by way of third. No swing. That's Dave Pallone at first. The umpires Ripley, Pallone, Rungi, and Engel. And Tommy Lasorda has tied a National League record held by a few. He's mad at all four umpires. There's a ground ball to Ozzie Smith. Almost threw it away. A little bit of footwork by Jack Clark. Watching Ozzy make that high throw reminds us he has committed only three errors this year. Whitey Herzog says he has really only committed one error this year. The National League record nine by Boa, and he could very well break it. That was a routine play for him, and he just took a little bit too much time, lost his concentration in throwing the ball, and about threw it away. Two of those three errors were on high throws. There's a drive to right, but he didn't get all of it. And Van Slyke is there to take it in. So two out. It was interesting watching uh, Campbell pitch to Guerrero. You talked about how he was inside, and he really equalized his swing because when he side-armed him, you could see Guerrero didn't have as much oomph into his swing. He got the, the pitch in a good spot. But right that's what the side-arm pitching will do if you're able to pitch the fastball in on his hands, which he did to Guerrero. That was a good piece of pitching by Campbell. Here's R.J. Reynolds now. He struck out in the first inning. 0 for 1. The Dodgers leading 4-0 in the third inning. There are several things, however, to keep in mind. Number one, the heat. The fact that Bob Welch is not a nine-inning pitcher. And number two, the Cardinals lead the National League in batting average and runs scored and on-base percentage as well. So no matter what the score, you can't write the Cardinals off, especially at home. They can manufacture runs. They don't need that three-run homer. 0-2 oh the count to R.J. Reynolds. A little dunker coming up for it is McGee, and then he cautiously backtracks so it doesn't bounce over his head. You really have to make a commitment when you play the outfield. You're either going to dive and sacrifice it or shy away like a horse looking at a rattlesnake. Otherwise, you pay the price of Andy Van Slyke. Catcher Mike Socia. Mike Socia coming up. The Dodgers with eight hits now. Two and two-third innings. Socia doubled to right to drive in a run. And remember, Brock was out of the plate trying to score from first. Two down. So you don't have to worry about a double play with Socia. We'll see now if they're going to turn Reynolds loose or not. He's stolen six out of seven, but at the same time, you like to keep the first baseman on the bag. So we'll see. Wouldn't be that bad an idea, Vin, if he gets thrown out. You got Socia leading it off. Uh -huh. Then again, with Welsh in there as a third man. We'll watch him. 2-0. If you're asking me, I would say to Mr. Reynolds, stay there and let Socia hit. I would not try any. If we look at Ricky Horton, he's another member of that bullpen crew that they call the committee here. I mean, they got uh, some guys down there really doing a job. Ricky Horton, Ken Daly, Bill Campbell, Jeff Lottie, 19 saves. I have a, a little piece of strategy to discuss with you, but not now with two out. If you get the last out, you go to commercial. But it has to do with Vince Coleman. 
and to show you the impact he's making in the National League. One of the big discussions going on. We'll save it maybe next inning. Little pop fly, and going out to get it is Ozzy, and that's that. So the Dodgers get one run, two hits, leave one. And at the end of two and a half innings, the Dodgers four, and the Cardinals nothing. Nieto, the pitcher, and McGee coming up. Who is that masked stranger? <laughs> I like this. That's Terry Whitfield, who would be the catcher in case of an emergency. And you like to see this on the ball club. Here he is, rather than sitting on the bench between innings, he ran out there with the mask on. And if nothing else, he's uh, getting a little bit of... Uh, on-job training. Uh, guys, little things like that keep you on the ball club rather than sitting on the bench moaning, why don't they ever play me? I'll be honest, though. The definition of emergency for him to catch, the Mississippi would have to overflow the banks under the arch. But if it does, <laughs> he's there. And he's talking to Jaeger. So just in case. Now, we have a chance. It's four to nothing Dodgers. And here's a bit of strategy that they're talking about now in opposing dugouts against the Cardinals. Here is Tom Nieto, the catcher. He'll be followed by the pitcher normally, and then Vince Coleman. Let's say Nieto's at first base. The pitcher tries to get him over and fails to get him over. So Nieto is at first with one out and Coleman the batter. And let's say Coleman hits a slow ground ball to an infielder. That's Lawless who's going to pinch hit. Would you instruct your infielder on a slow ground ball to let Nieto go to second base and throw Coleman out? Or would you try and force Nieto knowing that if Coleman is on first, he's going to steal second, and who would you rather have at second with oh, two out, no, Nieto no, or Coleman? No, no, no. What would, do you say? Oh, no doubt in my mind. I would force the guy, make sure I got him, because maybe the Mississippi River would overflow under the arch and Coleman wouldn't have a chance to steal. Well, I asked Tommy Lasorda that question yesterday because I thought about it the night before. Hit foul down the right field line. And Tommy said, that's just what I was telling Monty Bascall. He said, if Nieto gets on, I want my infielders to let him go to second. We'll throw Coleman I out. I disagree. 200%. What if Coleman stumbles? What if he gets a bad jump? What if Jaeger or Socher or whoever makes a great throw? And, uh, no, you got to make... And, and in the scoring position, I can't believe it. That's why Lasorda is playing sunglasses. He's managing under an assumed name. <laughs> Incognito. <laughs> two and two, the count. What uh, would you Tom do? Nieto. I really think I'd try it. I'd throw Coleman out. Sure, I would too. I wouldn't give in and say he's going to make sure he's going to steal second. Three and two. I thought you were going to bring up like Paul Richards used to do with Sam Jethro. If one out and a pitcher came up, I'd walk the pitcher and clog up the bases. Mm -hmm. That Richards used to do that with Sam Jethro. Well, even that the question would surface shows you the impact of Vince Coleman on the National League. Three and two to count to Nieto. And he lifts a fly ball to right center. Landro is there. One away. Vin, the impact was today. I mean, when we got the lineups, uh, Coleman was playing. Jaeger was catching. The sort of found out they had a meeting of the coaches and said, well, if Coleman's not playing, we'll get a left-handed bat in there. That is a disruptive force. Tom Lawless, who is coming up to pinch hit, and there is his beautiful young daughter, Jessica. Some of the stars. He's from Erie, Pennsylvania. Tom came up briefly three years ago at the Cincinnati Reds. Now back last year, he was with the Reds in Montreal, and his contract was purchased First in a deal for Mickey Mailer, Rick's older brother. And then they brought him up from Louisville. So Tom Lawless hitting for Bill Campbell. After mentioning the name Mailer, all I can do is think about that absolutely incredible Mets-Atlanta game the other night. Oh. Started by Dwight Gooden and Rick Mailer. Wound up 19 innings of fantasy land. and one strike. That's Monty Basco with a headset talking to what they call the eye in the sky, former Dodger catcher Joe Ferguson. Has to do with positioning people defensively. Fouled away. Two and two. 
Well, I don't think that Lawless will be able to pull Wells because center fielder Landro is in right center field. And they even moved him over a couple more steps. There's a big gap in left center field as you look at it, but look how far over in right center field the center fielder is. And they've moved Guerrero way off the line. Straight away left is just about empty. Now you can see Amal Patano also moving people. Two and two. Well, now remember, he went three and two to Nieto. Now he's three and two to Lawless. It's very early in the game, and it's hot. Four nothing Dodgers. Bottom of the third, one away. High fly ball. Look at Landro, frozen for the moment. Perfect, right exactly where he was standing. Well, scouting reports that they get the, the fan scouts. Uh, I don't think they get enough credit. They really don't because they they just tell the club that's coming in who's hurt who's hot who's hitting and running who's bunting who's pulling the trigger set the defense and there they are again yeah you, they're not just sitting there counting the baseballs now here's Willie McGee hitting 347 in the dirt ball one McGee gets a lot of leg hits and that's not a knock as a left-handed batter he is really dangerous 20% have been infield hits. That makes a big difference. He's leading the league. Without those infield hits, her would be the number one man. Yet he's got pretty good power. Whitey was talking about a home run he hit in the center field seats here. And this is the deepest center field in the National League. It's 414. So if he hit the center field seats, he really muscled one. McGee has 10 home runs, seven of them as a left-handed batter. down to Sachs and he got caught between hops but he made the play that thing almost ate him up so the Cardinals stay on the ground in the third inning and at the end of three Dodgers four Cardinals nothing well Bill Bueller one of the behind the scenes he's a trainer for the Dodgers spraying Kenny Landro trying to cool him off <laughs> but not cool him off he's had two home runs today Meanwhile, Ricky Horton, who pitched briefly last night, comes right back to work today. Ricky out of Poughkeepsie, New York. Cardinal product of the farm system and 0 and 2. So it's been Kepshire, Campbell, and Horton. Strike. Sacks fly to left in the second inning. Hit the ball fairly deep. Braun had to go just about to the track to get it. Ricky Horton is more or less of a spot reliever. He only worked 35 innings. He has one save. He didn't get too much work. Big chopper foul. Though it's still 0-2. Kerry Pendleton, who was the hero the other night, as we mentioned, with a leaping catch. That play he made, and then the throw that Coleman made, that one hopper off the wall of Whitfield, hit it off the sign in deep left field, and barehanded and threw a perfect strike. In fact, it was so great that I thought Whitey had a great line. He said he was going to call the Vatican and see if he could verify it as a miracle. <laughs> it was amazing the throw he made. I mean, a perfect strike. Zach's 0 2, hitting 237. And that's fouled away. This is the third game of a four-game series between the two teams. This is perhaps, what would the word be? Well, it's as dead even a rivalry as you could find in all of sports, the Dodgers and the Cardinals. We'll give you the numbers. It's, it's easy to absorb, I think, when you look at it. Now, look at this. Can you believe that? It's, One game difference? That's after last night's game. Yep. Isn't that amazing? That really is slicing foul down the line out of play. Well, I tell you, there was no greater war, and you well know it, when the Cardinals would go into Abbott's field. That's right. In, in the 40s, and of course, 42 was the great Cardinal team, Musial's first year. And then in the 60s, the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Cardinals had wars when the Cardinals had championship teams. So Sachs gets a base hit on this July 6th, this day in baseball. And what a day. 
July the 6th, 1933, the first All-Star game. And in Comiskey Park, Chicago, who put the seal of approval and the imprimatur on it but the Babe himself. Babe Ruth hitting a home run in the first All-Star game. And just a gentle reminder, a week from Tuesday, it'll be the All-Star game from Hubert Humphreys Stadium in Minneapolis right here on NBC. Ben, here's one of those spots I would go out to the pitcher and say, look, just lay it in there and make sure he bunts because you guarantee he's bunting. You might make a play at second. They got oh, him. Oh, they got him if he gets back. Nope. Boy, did they ever. Caught leaning. Well, Saxe looked like he lost his concentration because he was even leaning when his leg went up. Look at right there. No doubt about it. He was trying to get a running start because... Uh, they were going to charge very hard from third base. You could see Pendleton was all set, and it would have been a force play, so Lasorda was trying to make a play before it happened. Saxe has to be a little hot. There's a comebacker by Wells for the second out. Saxe was picked off second base last night. So two down. And Dave Anderson coming out. The Dodgers four runs, nine hits, and the Cardinals no runs, no hits. Here's another one of those spots where Anderson should take a lot of time to get in there and probably take the first pitch to make sure there he goes out of the batter's box. Uh, well, she's not even back in the dugout yet. You've got to give him a chance to get a rest, and what you have to do is at least take a strike. You know, we see the dugout a lot. We should point out something, and this is for real. The one flaw they made in building this ballpark, the steps in the dugout. There's a chopper to Pendleton. We can take a look at it a little bit later, but they are as narrow a set of stairs. They can really cause injury. In fact, Lasorda fell down last night going down them, but they're barely the length of a foot wide. Let's take a look at that as they drop that ball, and it'd be an error charge to Jack Clark. He had it, and then he just dropped it. That's what you call a major league oh, yeah. error. There's no other way to look at it. He just booted it. And that'll bring up Mariano Duncan, who is a much better hitter from this side of the plate. Bunt double and thrown out by Nieto. Four nothing Dodgers. We're in the fourth inning. And interestingly enough, Horton had speeded up his delivery to get Welsh out there again, and the strategy backfired when Clark dropped the ball. no strikes. Mariano had that little roller that he bunted up along third. They allowed it to roll, and while they were watching it roll, he wound up at second base. Duncan has been experimenting as a switch hitter. He's a natural right-hander, and his numbers are so good as a right-handed batter, you wonder why he ever changes. He's hitting 338 right-handed. And barely 200 left. With the runner going, he grounds to Pendleton, who throws, and Clark holds on to it this time, and that's it. So the pickoff of Sachs turns out to be a pretty big play, and at the end of three and a half, four-nothing Dodgers with Pendleton, her, and Clark coming up. In addition, remember tomorrow, the gentleman's final at Wimbledon, the world's most prestigious tennis tournament. Breakfast at Wimbledon, and it'll be a couple of upstarts. Boris Becker, the 17-year-old from West Germany, the youngest ever to make the finals, and the only unseeded player to ever make the finals, will have his power game against Kevin Curran. Kevin is the youngster out of South Africa who went to school at the University of Texas. And that'll be on NBC Sports with the action getting underway at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. Did you see anybody serve the ball harder than that Kern? It sounds hard. I've never seen the ball yet. He fires the ball. He doesn't hit it. I mean, it's amazing. Ball one. They say they've clocked that serve up to about 145 miles an hour. Danny Sullivan didn't go that fast at Indianapolis. <laughs> well, that's tomorrow. Right now, the Cardinals trying to get back into this game. They're still looking for a hit. Pendleton, her, and Clark. Fly ball to right center. RJ is there. One away. So Pendleton flies to Reynolds, and the batter will be Tommy Her. 
second baseman. There are the totals. 4-9-0, no runs, no hits. One error for the Cardinals. Tommy Herr, in his career high, had 49 RBIs. He's leading the league with 62. What's really interesting is he might be the first player, conceivably, to knock in 100 runs and hit fewer than 10 home runs. He has only three home runs. 35 years ago, George Kell did that. And you knew that, too, didn't you? <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> well, he's from Swift in Arkansas. Yeah, that's right. Kell had eight home runs and 101 RBI. Of course, Tommy says, well, I might do it with under five. <laughs> it's a ground ball foul. You know, he's always been a good hitter, and when you talk to uh, people like Whitey Herzog, he uses words like he's an intelligent hitter. He knows the strike zone, and Whitey said something very interesting. He said, I had him batting second because I needed somebody who could hit with the count of no balls in one strike. I had to get those jackrabbits turned loose, and Her was disciplined and intelligent enough to realize that. And then they moved him to the number three slot on the 14th of May. If you had to put your finger on a day when the Cardinal offense came alive. It was the 14th of May. 0-2 to her. Bouncer up the middle. Base hit. Now, while we're talking about Tommy Her, how do you like this? Do you know that he has failed to get on base by hit or walk in only six games all year? Oh, this ball should have been caught with a good follow-through, but Welsh does not have a good follow-through. Look at it. He's way out of position, and it comes right back up the middle. He just, he could have helped himself, but didn't. So there it is, the first hit of the game for the Cardinals, and it's Tommy Herr collects it, and now you know what the Cardinal fans are hoping for. They want the big guy to get him right back in the game. Clark walked in the second inning. And when you talk about a quick, crisp, compact swing, this one, and he really hits the ball hard. Two and oh. So standing at first, Tommy Herr with one out bottom of the fourth. Dodgers four, Cardinals nothing. Clark with 50 walks leading the league. They pitch around him so much. But of course, he is followed today by Andy Van Slyke. And Van Slyke has six home runs. So he's not that kind of a power hitter. He's also 0 for his last 12 at bat. Took a good fastball. Oh, boy, I was surprised. He's saying to himself right now, what were you thinking about, mm. Jack? Because mm. uh, Welsh just challenged him, much like he did in that great confrontation with Reggie Jackson in that World Series. Two and one. The only thing he might have thought the pitch was below the knees. That's the only thing I could think of as to why he would take that one. After two breaking balls, fast ball down the middle. So her held on by Brock. Four nothing Dodgers. One out, bottom of the four. Then her goes. Curveball is popped in the air foul. Brock digging, but it's very doubtful, and it's going to be five or six rows back in. That is really strange. I mean, would it be a straight steal? Down by four? Well, you can see he's got good numbers. 16 out of 18. In fact, her, you know, has stolen home this year. You've got to be really sure that you're going to make it. Last night, uh, Coleman stole two runs down and was thrown out because Clark can give you two quick runs. He is also grounded into six double plays, second on the team. Fastball, and he wasn't going to take that. Woo. He almost took out a row of seats back of the Dodger bullpen. So Welch threw him a curveball that he fouled off with the runner going. Came back with that letter high fastball and Jack almost broke it. Two and two. He's giving them fastballs up, and Clark is really ripping them. He is really going for the top limb. He's had two good cuts. 
you know, I talked to Whitey about his running game, and, and again, he's so bloody honest. He says, hey, sometimes we're going to look dumb. It doesn't work. If it works, we look smart. So when you think about her running with Clark hitting, if it works, smart. Doesn't, you're dumb. Clark became a Cardinal immediately. His first at-bat for them, he hit a home run against Dwight Gooden. That's a great way to join the club. Brock holding a corner on Tommy Herr. One out in the fourth. Dodgers four, Cardinals nothing. Clark followed by Andy Van Slyke. There goes her, and a change hit to third, and Anderson will throw him out. So the off-speed pitch is pulled to third, but with the runner going, they stay out of the double play. And Andy Van Slyke coming up with Tommy Hurd at second base. Right fielder, Andy Van Slyke. Van Slyke popped up in the second inning. Andy's had some troubles. He's had stomach pains. In fact, a few days ago, they were so concerned they thought it might be an appendicitis attack. They're still not exactly sure. He's not quite up to par. He's a good young ball player hitting 277. They're not sure if he's 100%. He didn't want to talk about it. Whitey Herzog has done a fine job in taking the Cardinals from seven games out to a game and a half in front in the National League East. We talked about May 14th. May 14th was the first time that the Cardinals lineup read Coleman, McGee, Herr, and Clark. And from that day on, they've taken off. One and one. So Bob Welch, with two out in the fourth inning, has surrendered one hit. Trying to get Van Slyke and end it. Slow curve, and that's popped up into shallow center. Landro digging and digging and digging and holds it. A fine catch by Kenny Landro. The run is home for sure at that ball. Four-nothing Dodgers. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. By Landro, he's really coming hard. Watch how far the slide takes him after he makes the catch. I mean, he... And he's having quite a day. Here he is in the third inning. He already had an inside the park home run. This one, he can just kind of watch it land and just glide around the bases. Though it is indeed Kenny Landro day here in St. Louis, at least for the first four innings. Two home runs, including an inside the park, that fine defensive catch. And here he is leading off the fifth. Followed by Guerrero and Brock. Ball one, one and oh. Landro hitting 247. Cardinals use Kepshire, Campbell, and Horton. You know, Gene Goslin, the trainer for the Cardinals, in thinking about Kurt Kepshire, who started the game. The strike. He calls Kepshire and Cox, who room together on the road, the Possum Brothers. He said all they do is sleep all day. So maybe he's just not a guy who likes to pitch in the daytime. <laughs> what did he say? He said the window shades in their room are down all the time. You couldn't grow a plant in their room. <laughs> of course, he's a great needler. Oh, the, he's a great needler. And he gets it from the other guy who was entered, Bob Bowman, who's been around. You believe 57 years in baseball? Oh, patience of a saint. Two and two, the count. So Kepshire, Campbell, and Horton, and it's 4-0 Dodgers in the fifth inning. Ground ball hard to first, and Clark will feed Horton coming over. You might note that Horton doesn't waste any time. He gets the ball, and he comes right at you. It's a Ray Miller school of pitching. Pitch fast and throw strikes. Pedro Guerrero doubled and grounded a short, scored a run. 
was talking to Tom Nieto about, uh, do you check these guys, see if they're trying to steal a sign from you? He said, oh, I look at all of them pretty much. I said, how about Guerrero? He said, oh, I watch, and I look at his eyes before I give the sign. Let's see if he does. Couldn't see. High drive into deep left field. Back goes Braun. Away back, it's gone. Guerrero hits his 20th home run of the year, and the Dodgers lead 5 to nothing. And you don't necessarily have to hit strikes. That ball looked like it was out of the strike zone. Looked like it was low, and he just reached down with the like a five iron and really hit it. He is so strong, isn't he? Oh, that little sign, you see him as he bends his index finger. It's a special hello to his wife, Denise. Here's the pitch. Let's see where it is. It's low. By the way, that reminds me, and he was the first to bring it up when I had mentioned it. Guerrero said, Billy Martin's statement is not 100%. Which Remember one? Billy Martin said, all Latins are first ball, fast ball, high ball hitters. <laughs> Guerrero said, I'm a low ball hitter. And that's a perfect example of it as Brock hits back to the box, two down. Interesting about Guerrero, you know, twice he has come within one home run of Steve Garvey's Los Angeles Dodgers season record of 33. When he hit 32 in 1983, it was as a third baseman. Now back in the outfield, he has 20, and he could very well pass that 33. home runs in his last 25 games Guerrero that's a pretty good year right there 20 home runs in 77 games so you're looking at at least 40 chopper to Ozzy that takes care of RJ but the Dodgers add a run one run one hit one swing and at the end of four and a half the Dodgers five and the Cardinals nothing Braun Smith and Nieto coming up Remind us, Sports World tomorrow, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 2 p.m. Pacific, United States Gymnastics Championship. We'll have Olympic medalist Tim Daggett and Scott Johnson. They'll head the list as they set their sights for the 88 Summer Games. Coverage will be from Jacksonville, Florida. Bottom of the fifth inning, 5-0 Dodgers. Steve Braun, Ozzie Smith, and Tom Nieto. Braun flied to right in the second inning. 0 for 1. The pitch is spot is due up fourth. And if they get anything going, Whitey apparently thinking about a hitter. 0 and 1 to count. Well, 1 and 1. By the way, a footnote on Guerrero's home run. He now has 20. That ties him with Dale Murphy in the National League. Dave Kingman has 20 in the American League. 1 and 2 the count. hit down the line foul down in the Dodger bullpen so if Whitey's thinking hitter he shows his thoughts by getting Bob Forsh up down in the bullpen one and two two and two Bob Welch one and one. He had a sprained ligament in his right elbow that really set him back. That's a fair ball. Brock loves it. Overhands to Welch who drops it. And Welch in dropping the throw. Let's see if he hurt himself. I don't know whether he was just annoyed over dropping it or whether he got hurt. Let's see. Sosha didn't think he tagged the bag that when they collided it uh, forced him to miss the bag and that's why Sosha wanted the ball. Now he's arguing with Pallone about it. Lasorda and Bill Bueller, the trainer, going out to check on Welch. Let's see what happens here. Brock gets the ball in good shape. Looked like it was a good throw. Let's see if he tags the bag. Oh, he stepped right on it. Hit it right in the middle of it. Bobby apparently taking a glancing blow off the, maybe the side of the head even. Can we see that one more time, George? Just watch the runner now. See if he if he hits him with his knee. Right there. 
I think the foot. left knee hit him on the side of the head. Seemed to grab his arm. Maybe it was the, uh, let's see here. Oh, he reached out. You uh, can see his arm. He mm -hmm. reached out with his arm. Yeah, the right shoulder yeah. is what took the knee. And to add to everything else, they'll give him an error, of course. <laughs> and is there a play that's practiced more in spring training than the pitcher covering first? No, that, that's the play. That's it. There's an interesting note, too. The Dodgers have done very well defensively of late. But Welsh will be watched extremely carefully now. As we told you, he runs out quicker than anybody else. Carlos Diaz is in the pen. The strike. Like Lasorda has always said, Welsh taps out and loses his stuff quicker. It's not a, a gradual thing at all. So after that collision, they have to watch him. One and one. Dodgers leading 5 nothing, so he has a margin for error. Sporting News had a great piece on uh, how tough it is to manage, and almost to a man, it was one to take a pitcher out, and that's one of the reasons. Some guys it's gradual, other guys the cart flies out right now. One ball and one strike. Bob Wells working on Ozzie Smith. Ground ball to the hole. Base hit. Braun is way to third by Lanier, but he wasn't watching his coach. He'll hear about that later on. Al Lanier is a little ticked off as if to say, what am I doing standing here in the sun if you're not going to look at me? Boy, he looked like a windmill going, and Braun looked like he looked behind him and just pulls up short. He takes a look there and says, no, I'm going to stop right here. He's not even looking at uh, Lanier. So with two on and nobody out, Whitey Herzog watching and sends Mike Jorgensen out with two on and nobody out as Nieto, Jorgensen, and McGee. Last night he punted for a base hit. If he catches them back, uh, he can handle a bat. He doesn't have a whole lot of speed, but last night he caught him by surprise. Ball one. Tom Nieto went to a lot of baseball games as a kid in Los Angeles to watch the Dodgers. He's from Downey, a suburb of the city. One ball and no strikes to count. Two on, nobody out. A rally precipitated by the error by Bob Wells covering first. Fastball, one and one. Every time I see a guy take a pitch like that, I think he's looking breaking ball to go the other way. Because he's he just right down the middle. You wouldn't think Whitey would have him take a strike. No. Uh-uh. One and one to Nieto. Pass ball right in there again. He's not going to get two more. He backs away from the home plate as if it smells bad. Well, <laughs> now he's got to regroup. He's got to say to himself, that's it. i got to start fighting off those pitches, and if nothing else, get that ball to that right side somehow, some way. If he pulls it, it's a cinch double play. One and two to Tom Nieto. Braun at second, Smith at first. Nobody out. Five-nothing Dodgers, fifth inning. Breaking ball, and he hits it to Sachs, who juggles, gets one, and that's all. If he makes a clean catch, it's an easy double play. He was trying to go to the right side, which he did. He just laid that bat on. He did not take a hard swing, and you can see the disgust that Sachs is showing because right here, he can't get it out of that big glove, and that's where he loses the double play right there. If he'd have had that little Joe Morgan glove on, yes, he'd have gotten him. And, of course, Ozzie Smith really did a good job of making sure that Duncan didn't uh, complete it. I thought that was a very dangerous slide by Ozzie Smith. In other words, he didn't try to hook him with his legs. He went in with his head, and his head almost hit Mariano Duncan's right knee. Boy, that's a that's a scary way to try to break up a double play. He got away with it. Duncan straddled him. It's more of a dive than a slide. Wow. Well, here's Mike Jorgensen with one out and runners at first and third. Jorgie certainly fulfills the definition of being a veteran player. He first came up with the New York Mets in 1968. And he has played with a lot of clubs. All the way to 
good play. And he promptly bangs it up the middle. Base hit. One run is in. That makes it five to one, Dodgers. And Lasorda is sending Karanowski out to the mound. I think the big concern for the Dodgers, of course, is to make sure that Welsh's shoulder is okay. Leaving five to nothing, he had to go five innings to get the victory. And you know he'd like to get at least the three outs in the inning. Well, those two fastballs he threw to Nieto indicated he was all right. Uh, that looked like a breaking ball. He got out over the plate, and Jorgensen was up there to send that ball up the middle. He wasn't going for uh, big swing for big home run, just get a piece of it and a big base hit. So Paranowski goes back to the dugout. Carlos Diaz continues to throw in the Dodger bullpen. And Willie McGee will be the batter. So you figure the error by Welsh and then Nieto's double play ball, the inning should have long been over. But the Dodger defense has proven to be their own worst enemy. McGee has grounded out twice, 0 for 2. If you are thinking double play, you are thinking of a miracle. The Cardinals have only grounded into 45 double plays. Vince Coleman has grounded into one in 308 appearances. McGee none in 293. And there's going to be trouble on that one. And there it is. It's another infield hit. Willie McGee's 20th of the year to load the bases for Terry Fenelon. If he gets any kind of a bouncing ball, he's a threat to beat it out. This one hits in front of the plate. It's not that hard in front of the plate. It doesn't get that high. He didn't hit it hard enough for Welsh to get the thing on the short hop, and it's just too late right here. So it is quite an inning as Welsh drops Brock's throw for an error. Smith singles to right. Nieto hits a double play ball, but Sachs can only get one on it. Jorgensen singles for a run, and McGee's infield single loads him up. Look at Pendleton. Can you believe that? And here he is with the bases loaded. Slow and high with that curveball. And you see him pitching out of a stretch with the bases loaded. I think he'll think better of that, or will he? No, he's going to concentrate on a stretch to try and help his control. McGee at first, Jorgensen at second, Nieto at third. Fastball fouled away. Speed never really has a slump. And that's why I said earlier, you, they manufacture runs. There's so many ways that when you have speed, you can score runs, topped balls, errors, double plays that are not completed. And, and it, it's, it's the old expression, the nits and nats bite you, and then the lions and tigers will eat you up. Now he's right to, to where he's the second, third, and fourth place hitters coming up. One ball, one strike. Curveball, a hit down to Duncan, big hop to Sachs, and he missed Sachs. A run is over, and the bases are still loaded. McGee was coming down from first, and he rushed the play. Boy, you talk about manufacturing runs. Error, and they're charging Sachs with the error. Look at that, right off his glove. And McGee, right on top of him, he broke down there, and uh, you look at it, you say, how did he get all this going? Here it is, once again, it looks like it's going to be a double play starting out. Duncan gets it. Whoops. So the Cardinals have picked up two gift runs, two Dodger errors by Sachs and Welch, an infield single by McGee, and clean singles by Jorgensen and Smith. And now the Cardinals are back in the game. Tommy Herr, the number two hitter in the league, leading the league in RBIs. And he's up there with one out, the base is loaded. Dodgers five, Cardinals two. And on deck, Jack Clark. Bow back. Herr leads the club in production as far as men on base in scoring position. He's hitting over 430. Look at that. 
Tommy has done one thing differently this year. He has moved up in the batter's box a little bit. He got into a habit of swinging at some bad balls. And to try and get up on top of that curveball, he's moved up a little. And at 340, you have to say it has helped. There he is. Right foot just about even with the front of the plate. 0 oh and 1 to count. Curveball foul back. Big overhand jug in the count 0 oh and 2. So Mike Jorgensen is at third. McGee is at second. Pendleton is at first. And Lasorda is beside himself. Welsh has a high fastball, so the ground ball pitch for him is the overhand curveball, and that's what he's looking for to get the double play. But even when he gets the ground ball with this track team that the Cardinals have going, you don't know what's going to happen. Lasorda is hurting physically as well as mentally. He has a bad neck. He kicked a bucket the other night when they lost and almost broke his foot, and then he fell down the dugout steps last night and hurt his knee. And now, mentally, he's being flip-flopped. 0-2 to Tommy Herr. Well short the rubber. Jorgensen, McGee, and Pendleton out on the line. One out. 5-2 Dodgers fifth inning. Fastball away. And that bluff had he thrown, he would have hit Tommy Herr right in the jaw. You can see Socia move out on that uh, pitch. He's trying to set up a particular pitch. Depending on Welsh's control, whether it'll be this one, the one ball, two strike, or two, two. He's not going to go beyond two, two with the bases loaded. But there's a real battle going on here. He wants him to hit that curveball. On, one ball and two strikes to Tommy Herr. Shook him off. And he's off the rubber. Shook him off again. Start over, says Socia. He's off the rubber. He's going to maybe have to go out there and talk to him a minute. He shook him off three pitches. I know they're not worrying about Willie McGee stealing the sign. No. Whoa, almost threw that fastball away. He wanted that fastball. Now, here's his pitch of decision right here. You certainly can't go up there guessing curveball, but just for the sake of watching this game, I'm guessing curveball. If you're in a batter's box, you're, you're protecting that plate. You're not looking for anything except the baseball. Two balls and two strikes, and Bob Welsh is right in the middle of the griddle now. The base is loaded. One out. And, of course, he could easily succumb to the temptation of concentrating on what might have been. But two errors have gotten him into a mess. He has to make it happen on this pitch. Two and two to Tommy Herr. Breaking ball lifted to left field. Guerrero goes back. Two men tag. One will score. McGee to third is in there. as good a curveball as he's thrown today. That ball really snapped off. You could see that thing. And now they talk he left too soon. Well, let's take a look quickly if we can. What else is going to happen, Ben? Lasorda has gone out and talked to the plate umpire, Steve Ripley. He's questioning, does the run score? But well, what is he talking about? If it's too soon, maybe it was Devon McGee that made the play. We'll have to wait and see. Evidently, it was Willie McGee who tagged the run, scored, and McGee left second too soon. Here's another edition of Baseball Remembered. On the fly ball to left field, Mike Jorgensen tags up on the catch, but in the right-hand side, here comes Willie. It looked like McGee had about three steps to Jorgensen's one. Engel was in good position. Now, you might just watch Jorgensen break off third and watch how quickly you pick up McGee. Now, Engel is getting in good position at third base, the umpire. Now, when the play is made, Ball McGee is already in motion. Here comes Jorgensen. He's got about two steps on him. That's about as close as we can get, but obviously the umpire is right on top of it. 
left too soon, and Lasorda was arguing that the run had not scored uh, before the out was made, but it had. By the way, if you're keeping score, the throw went from Guerrero to Anderson to Sachs. So McGee is out for leaving second base too soon, 7-5-4. A very strange day. And a whale of a game now. It's 5-3 Dodgers in the sixth. A strike to Mike Sosha. Bob Forsh is the fourth Cardinal pitcher on the mound. And there's his shot to right. Going back on the ball is Van Slyke. And it is off the wall. And Sosha gambling for two. He is... Slyke played the carom perfectly and gives Ozzy Smith a good ball to handle. He had had trouble with that big bounce, but watch him just wait for it to come off the wall. And he gives Smith a great ball to handle, and he has to wait for Sosha, actually. But why is he blocking him like that? He get run over by a Mack truck. Look at him. I'd have given him the ole, right? I, well, he wanted to make sure he tagged him, and did you see how he knocked him down, too, Ozzie yeah. Smith? I mean, it was a mismatch. But why, why little Ozzie would, would try to shoulder block Mike Sosha, I don't know. Maybe he got tired of having sand kicked in his face. I'd have hit him right on the coconut going by. I would have <laughs> just put my glove out there and say, here, tag yourself, sir. He's not getting $2 million for tangled with catches. However, one away. And the batter, Steve Sachs. Every now and then you see it happen. One game suddenly becomes two. And you're wondering right now if the whole complexion of the game has turned and gone to the Cardinals. Sacks fly to left, single to left, committed the error, fouled it off. I'll tell you one thing. I've been around baseball a long time, so have you. Somebody really flipped the goofy switch in this <laughs> game. Everything has happened. It's great. The crowd loves every minute of it. Maybe not down in the dugout. Mike Sosha putting on the gear after that collision. Of course, he, he was giving away a lot of weight to Ozzie Smith. Ozzie Smith weighs 150 pounds, and Mike Sosha weighs 220. So Ozzie looks like something that fell out of Sosha's pocket. <laughs> they beat him. Mike's probably got a set of cufflinks at home bigger than Ozzie Smith. <laughs> But he stood right in there. I'll say one thing. He gave away weight to Smith, and he gave away speed to Van Slyke because Ozzy was waiting for him. I couldn't believe it. After waiting, he would get in his way like that. <laughs> one away. Fouled off. The paid attendance today, 33,852. The Cardinals going over the million mark in their earliest in history date, 33rd. A lot going on in the city of St. Louis. The Veiled Prophet on quite a time. Base hit up the middle. So the Dodgers get two hits, but they have one out and a runner at first. And Bob Welch coming up, so Forsh hasn't fooled anybody. Pitcher Bob Welch. Well, you'll have to look for the bun here, if nothing else, to get for, uh, Welch in out of the heat. single to right and hit back to the box. Pendleton coming in. Here comes Clark. Ball one. Boy, they're really putting a pincer move on him. I guess I got burned on that play more than once, but I used to always tell those pitchers, lay the ball in there. Then they'll bunt it hard back to the infielders. You got a chance for the force at second base because you almost feel certain he's bunting. Watch Pendleton. Clark is running like he has a license to run. He's right on top of him. Two balls and no strikes. But you know what? Running that hard, Ben, he's going to run so hard, the momentum will carry him sure. towards the line. He's going to have to put the brakes on, turn around, and do it. And Clark just said something to him, like, say, hey, if he's going to butt, let him. Now, of course, uh, you're not so sure two balls and no strikes. Clark is certainly not sure. He's gone all the way back to the bag to hold a corner on Sachs. We'll watch Pendleton. He's not coming. And there's the bunt foul in the count two and one. Jack Clark, of course, he's getting on the job training. One of the great right fielders in the National League playing first base for St. Louis and doing a very good job. 
He'll have to come hard this time. Welsh gave uh, Malfitano a good look at third. I'd be gambling bun all the way. Two and one. All three. Wow. So Forsh trying so hard to spoil the bunt has dug a hole in the count. Three balls, one strike. It took a bite out of Nieto in the count three and two. Interesting in looking at Bob Forge, you want to talk about the attrition in the game of baseball. Only Bob Forge and Tommy Herr, the second baseman, remain from the team that Whitey Herzog took over June the 9th, 1980. In five years, as Leo said, back up the truck. All the others are gone. There's Herr. He's not sure to sign, and he wants to talk to Amalfitano now. He's not sure if he wanted a bunt sign. I don't think he could care what's happening at first base with Sachs, but he might like to know what's going on. Sachs, by the way, has stolen 17 bases, but he has been picked off twice in the series at second base and today at first base. With a full count, one out, there he goes. Hit him in the head. So Forsh has given up two hits and a walk. And the 3 2 pitch was right at the chops. Look at this. And watch what uh, Welsh does. He's ready to give it that little chop swing, fake bunt, and now he just walks to first base because it's been a long, hot day. He's had a lot of action. And now he's going to have to run the bases. Anderson is the batter with Sachs at second, Welsh at first. Five three Dodgers were in the sixth inning. The Dodgers had a five to nothing lead, crumble a bit in the fifth inning. Fastball foul tipped, it hit the bat. Down in the Cardinal bullpen, right hander Neil Allen, who pitched very briefly last night, is back up. Allen faced only one batter last night, walked him and came out. account. So Bob Forsh is really struggling. Forsh for years, the ace of the staff, facing Dave Anderson, who has flied to right, walked, and aboard on the yard. And he drives it to left, coming in for it is Braun. It's going to land and take that high bounce, so Sachs will score easily, and the Dodgers lead six to three. for a minute like Braun was going to make that play but when he saw that he wasn't going to make the play it's not like on the grass where you can come in and try to short hop it or play it off your chest you have to wait for it to uh, hit and play the big hop and there's no way he could get sacks and you think too that if Vince Coleman were playing left field with his speed he might very well have caught that ball right Bob Forge has given up three singles and a walk for a run he hadn't retired a hat ball to straightaway center. McGee has to go back, tagging up his Welsh, but they tell him to stay there and he's going to come over anyway. Ozzie to third and he's in there. Amalfitano told him to stay and he's still tagged up. And so did Anderson. Joe saying to him, weren't you looking at me? I didn't want you to come over. With less than two outs, yes, but with uh, that being the second out, he should have just stayed there because, and it's pretty close at that, he has to slide, and you just wonder, but he was in there. And it's going to take him a while to come out of that dugout when he can finally gets back in there. It's been a tough day on the bases for him. So Amalfitano talking to Welch, who is at third. Anderson is at second, and with two out, Kenny Landro, the batter. Landro with a home run inside the park in the first inning and a home run off the facing of the second deck in the third. He has three RBIs and he has scored twice. Right. Dodgers six, Cardinals three, and the Dodgers with runners at second and third. Bob Forsch, a 20-game winner back in 77, but he is really struggling.
deck, Pedro Guerrero. And first base open. There's Pedro waiting his turn. Two out. The Dodgers wind up with three hits and a walk for one run, and Whitey dodged somewhat of a bullet. It's 6-3 Dodgers at the end of five and a half. The Dodgers leading the Cardinals 63. I don't know. Maybe the best way to sum this one up is to say it's a day game following a night game. It is, and uh, I tell you, it's weird. We've seen plays that you can go a whole season and not see called uh, leaving the base too soon. And last night, you had that running out of the 45-foot uh, uh, line over there. So it's been kind of a weird series. Then we had a bunt double by Mariano Duncan. We had a wild pitch that hit the backstop and came directly back to Tom Nieto, who tagged out the runner at the Plate. So the catcher gets an unassisted put out on a wild pitch. <laughs> so it's been that kind of a day. The gremlins are out. Meanwhile, Bob Welch, who is on thin ice, if you could possibly have ice in St. Louis, it would be thin, gave up three runs, but the big play was the offensive blunder of McGee leaving second base too soon. Otherwise, Jack Clark would have been coming up with runners at first and third. Instead, when McGee was called out for leaving second too soon, it made Jack off. Clark a leadoff man. Jack and you would much rather, if you're the pitcher, look at Clark leading off an inning than with men on base. He led off the second inning and walked, grounded out in the fourth. So Jack Clark hitting 292. 15 home runs, 57 runs batted in. And we're in the bottom of the six. Dodgers six, Cardinals three. Park is at a home run in every park this year except Philadelphia and Cincinnati. That wouldn't be a bad play if he'd put a bunt down. He beats it out fine, uh, but Welsh would still have to move. They're going to try to get to him because he's had a tough day on the bases, Mr. Welsh. Boy, they've really overshifted on Clark as they did last time. A slow curveball hit to Dave Anderson. That's the second time they've gotten him on off-speed pitches. It was a straight change in the fourth inning, and now the slow curve in the sixth. One away. Well, really good fastballs Clark has seen. He took for strikes. And he also uh, Tommy hawked a couple high fastballs down there, but uh, the real good ones he did take for strikes. So you just wonder if he's kind of cataloging that, if he comes up in a game situation to start looking for that off-speed pitch. Now Mike Sosia talking to Welsh, probably about Andy Van Slyke, who popped a short and flied to center. Andy hitting 276. He's followed in the lineup by Steve Braun. Then when you look at the defense, you can see how the artificial surface has really changed the game. Sacks at second base is beyond the line. We saw Duncan behind the line. He's still there. Line drive, fair ball down into the Cardinal bullpen and beyond. They are waving Van Slyke to third. The relay to Sacks, he'll run it back. It's a triple for Andy Van Slyke. Van Slyke triples. He was 0 for 13 until he got this shot. And it's just inside the line, and Lanier had him coming all the way. This is a good doubles and triples ballpark, big ballpark, 330 down the line, 414 we showed you in center field. And Welch is just getting back to the mound because he had a backup third, and with that, the bullpen for the Dodgers swings into action again. If you were keeping score, this would be something the way you might keep track of Steve Braun. The nine indicating that he flied to right field in the second inning. And then the E1, that was the ground ball he hit to Brock, who threw to Welsh, and Welsh dropped it for the error. Eventually, he worked his way around and scored. A comeback to Welsh, looks Van Slyke back and throws to first. So Braun losing an opportunity to pick up an RBI and get the Cardinals closer. And the batter now is Ozzie Smith. He 
Ozzy Smith fouled out and single to right. One for two. You know, before we mentioned that on that base hit to left field by Anderson, it might have been caught by Vince Coleman, but Steve Braun is playing. Whitey says, as far as he's concerned, when Coleman is in left, McGee is in center, and Van Slyke is in right. That is as good an outfielder as there is anywhere. Tremendous speed in that outfield. Coleman has just become a great, well, a good left fielder. Not great yet. He hasn't been around that much. Here's Ozzie. Strike. Well, you have McGee, a gold glove in center. We saw Coleman's arm the other night, and we just saw that great throw by Van Slyke. Curveball. Hit down the right field line. Hooking and goes foul. Slow curve, and Ozzie jumped on it. Ozzie has hit three home runs this year. That's his career high. He's had ten home runs in his entire career. All ten have come from the other side of the plate. Carlos Diaz is pitching a game in the Dodger bullpen. Fastball is hit foul the other way. Outside of third, down to Diaz. Baltimore punishing Kansas City. Eight to one in the seventh inning. That's McGregor. Scotty leading by seven. Oh and two. One and two. Andy Van Slyke at third. The Cardinals have stolen home twice this year. Coleman has done it once. And Her has done it once. Van Slyke certainly has no idea of doing it at all, but we just thought we'd show you they can do it. and two to Ozzie Smith. Fastball hit between Van Slyke and the foul line. He has a better cut at the curveball, at least the high curveball, and it's rare that a hitter will ever let that pitch get by. With the fastball, he's just trying to fight it off and punch it to the opposite field. He did it twice. They're playing him uh, wide of the bag. If he hits it between uh, Anderson and the bag, look out. Curveball punched on the ground to Duncan, who comes up with it and gets him. Good play by Mariano to short hop on the dead run, and they waste the triple by Van Slyke. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Next Saturday, NBC Sports continues its coverage of the 85 baseball season. Some viewers will see Pedro Guerrero and the Dodgers play the Chicago Cubs at Wrigley Field, others the San Francisco Giants and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Coverage begins with Major League Baseball and Inside Look. NBC Sports, the network of the 1985 All-Star Game. And talking about Guerrero. Strike. Pete with 20 home runs, tied with Dale Murphy. He is number one in slugging percentage ahead of Murphy. You got some boys who live in the high rent district in this game. McGee leading the league. In batting, her leading the league in RBIs. One and one. And Duhar tops with 14 wins. Fouled away. One and two. When we had that game up there where we're going to do Dodgers and Cubs, I couldn't help but think of the Cracker Jack game. Ernie Banks was there. Even in the Cracker Jack game, he wanted to play two. And yeah. we, we finally decided that he is the perennial teenager and lives in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> He's something. Two and two. Let me ask you something. Yes. When uh, when you played. Yes. Did you always stick your tongue out when you bunted? <laughs> no. I saw your picture in the paper. Two balls, two sides. You look like Skeezix or Skippy. Listen, I had a put down like I've never had put down. Sandy Koufax, wonderful guy, right? Yeah. He watched me take batting practice, and he came up to me and said, you know what? You're the only guy that the 20-year layoff didn't change. <laughs> didn't change. You didn't slow up a bit. Huh? <laughs> Guerrero hadn't slowed up. Look at that. He's caught Murphy with 20 home runs. And you have Jack Clark trailing by five. How about Dale Parker? Murphy, of course, his game rained out with the Mets today. Dave Parker having a big year mm. for the Reds. Two and two to Guerrero. to the hole. A great stop by Ozzie, but that's all. Not a thing he can do with it. He's mad. <laughs> He's ticked off. He wanted him. 
most people would not even get to it. He wasn't happy that he got to it. He was unhappy because he couldn't make the throw. Now, look at this. I mean, that is completely outstretched. He's thinking to throw, and the ball pops out, and so he said, well, I guess I can't make the play at that. Look at that. That's incredible. The acrobatic Mr. Smith. Mm. Well, here's Greg Brock, one for three. High bouncer coming over to get it is her, and he's going after the front man and got him. Oh, what a play by Tommy Her. I can't believe he'd go after the front man. Ozzy got hit pretty hard. Guerrero went into him. He's having a little trouble getting up. He got clipped pretty good around the ankle. May have been spiked. I think Guerrero thought the play was going to be at first base, and he saw Ozzy there. They're going to check it. Those are valuable wheels. Look how far and how close he is to first base, but he's got second base on his mind, and Guerrero, he went into him with the front foot of the slide. Funny slide at that. His body took a bad hop. He hit it twice. Yeah, Pedro is not a good slider. He broke his ankle right trying to slide, so then he was afraid to slide feet first. He was sliding head first and jammed his shoulders, so he's gone back to somewhat of a tentative slide feet first. I think it's the fact that he had on those rubber cleats really prevented an injury. Had those been regular spikes, he would have cut him. The Guerrero with a single, a double, and a home run has a chance to rest. And Reynolds takes ball one. In the Cardinal bullpen, since the pitcher spot is due up second in the bottom of the seventh inning, Ken Daly is loosening up. There are the shoes. Plastic spikes. Right. One ball, no strikes. And there goes Brock. Hit and run foul off to the left out of play. I tell you, Ozzie can't take too many collisions with Mike Sosha and Pedro Guerrero. But he has. Plus, it had to hurt diving at that ball hit by Guerrero to land on the rug. There's the scoring on Reynolds. The K, of course, the ignominious strikeout. Then the single to center. 1B. That's about as basic as you can get. Doesn't that tell you where the ball went. Is that your scoring? No, no, no. That came from Sesame Street. Oh. There's one hit foul down the left field line out of play. How could you score like that? 1B. 1B. <laughs> The truck is saying to us, give, give us a break. Come on, guys, give us a break. Well, they broke their crayon. <laughs> <laughs> One and two. There's Ken Daly in the bullpen. <laughs> yeah, Brock at first. Seventh inning, 6-3 Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> this will be Forsh's last inning one way or another. takes care of R.J. Swinging almost one-handed. He really chased a bad ball. Good curveball, though. He was biting all the way. Catcher Mike so Sosha. two down, and Mike Sosha coming up. Second time that R.J. has gone down on strikes. Sosha, double to right, popped to short, single to right, and was thrown out, you remember, when Andy Van Slyke made that great throw to Ozzie Smith to prevent him from a double. won the count. When Sosha doubled in the first inning, Brock was cut down at the plate. But he did get an RBI. Guerrero had scored ahead of him. One and one. Sosha looking at Amalfitano. The Dodgers like to play hit and run. And they would certainly play it on a two-ball, one-strike count. Right now, it's one and one. Now, I would think if they're going to play it, this is it. Down in the bullpen, Neil Allen has gotten up to throw again, and Daly sits down. So we'll see if they play hit and run now. What do you think? No. Okay. As they say in Hawaii, no big thing, brother. <laughs> <laughs> He's not gone, and there's a fly ball in the left center. McGee has to hustle to get there. He can't, and it's going to bounce behind him. Brock is around third. Braun's throw to the plate to Pendleton gets away from Pendleton, and Sosha's going to try to score. Pendleton throws to Nieto. He is safe. Can you believe this game? A 
Bono is right next to home plate, and look at the bench. They're all needling Socia for his great speed because it was as much an element of surprise as anything else because I'll tell you, the oil was leaking, the wheels were coming off. Now, once it bounces, we know that Brock is going to score. But Socia, I can't believe it. Brown finally throws it. They think they're going to make the play here. Now, look at here. He breaks stride. He shifts into high gear. He, they must have clocked him at four miles an hour. And look at his hook slide. Ah, oh, Mike, he did it for the catchers. Everybody's proud. That's a St. Jude play, a miracle. <laughs> if you're keeping score, that was a double, an AstroTurf double, an RBI. <laughs> and Socia scores on the error charge to Pendleton when he let the ball get away, thrown in by Steve Braun. That was a 2B. Yeah, 2B. <laughs> or not 2B. <laughs> Herzog hiding behind his shades. He and Lasorda are both managing under assumed names today, and that's foul. Mike Socia is getting daring. Now, he was out by 10 feet on the ball. He hit the right field, but this one, he just kept coming. I don't think Amalfitano could have given him much help, although Joey was right next to home plate, so he looked like he had him coming all the way. I was so intent on watching Socia make that turn. He's really been hustling. Look at him. Bob Baylor needling him as he went down the runway. One and two to count to Steve Sachs in a game that can be best described as bizarre. And it's hit up the middle for a base hit. The Bob Force has given up five hits, three runs. He has walked a batter. And now he has to pitch to Bob Welch. The Dodgers, eight runs on 16 hits. The Cardinals, three runs, five hits. For the Dodgers, 16 hits, they're high for the year. Ball one. <laughs> this game has really been <laughs> weird. Fouled away. The most hits against the Cardinals this year. 18 by the Pittsburgh Pirates. There's a drive to center, but this one is catchable, and McGee does just that. However, the Dodgers get two, and at the end of six and a half, as Mike Socia makes the great hook slide at home. 8-3 Dodgers. This year, we'll be taking a look at baseball's future legends. A thing of beauty and a joy forever. I can appreciate this because he's doing it on his own. He slides. Now watch him look at the umpire and saying, did I make it? Tell me I did. <laughs> and he did. He Mike, did. some job. Mama Socia's proud of you, but you dirtied your pants, Mike. <laughs> The Dodgers leading 8-3, to three, and they put in Sid Bream at first base. So they put in somebody with a clean uniform. A reminder, next week, the game of the week. The Dodgers with Guerrero and company move into Wrigley Field to look at some ex-Dodgers like Davey Lopes and Ron Say. It's an interesting matchup. And others will see the San Francisco Giants and the Pittsburgh Pirates. And, of course, a week from Tuesday from Minnesota, the 1985 All-Star Game right here on NBC Sports. There's Sid Bream up and down with the Dodgers, recently called now back from Albuquerque. And, of course, Lasorda's idea in a game like this is to keep other people sharp besides the regulars. He might need Bream in another day or so, so he's given him a chance to play the last couple of innings. And I checked. I had to check. And I'm not taking anything away from Alpha Tano, but Mike Socia did it on his own. Coming all the way. And that's the rest of the story. <laughs> Seventh inning, eight to three Dodgers. Meanwhile, how'd you like to have a few words to Joe Malfitano and Hal Lanier about the science of stopping runners? They need a <laughs> rope today or a gun. The Malfitano Lanier answering service. Ground ball scooped up by Anderson and takes care of Nieto one away
there's Hal Lanier. Yeah, remember when he was trying to wave Steve Braun to third, and Braun never even looked at him and stopped at second. So the third base coaches have something going today, and they're not too happy about it. Here is Yvonne De Jesus, at one time a Dodger. He has been blessed with a remarkable body and also the fact he has never missed a game because of injury. There's his daughter, Narbet. Yvonne, a likable shortstop. Played in several ball clubs now. He's certainly a good backup man for Ozzie Smith. to the hole, base hit. So De Jesus batting for Bob Foyce. Singles to left field. And the batter now will be Willie McGee. Good closely by Tommy Herr, who is one for two. A look at De Jesus. That's outside, one and one. Time he had two teammates finish one two in batting in the National League, the Giants, Willie Mays and Don Mueller. Chopper to Mariano Duncan, he'll feed Sachs. They get one, and Sachs he hit by De Jesus. His high throw pulls Bream off the bag. So Yvonne upended him. He hit him at just the perfect time, just as he started to release that ball. It'd be tough to double up McGee anyhow with the great speed, but Sachs had the idea. Now, just as he starts to throw it, he gets hit right there. Whoops. It was a good, clean hit. As we mentioned earlier, McGee is yet to hit into a double play. With four more plate appearances today, he is zero for 295. Now back. Just in case you're of a mind to be interested in that sort of thing, the record in 154 games, Augie Galland of the Chicago Cubs in 1935 did not hinder to a double play. McGee at first. Pendleton has popped up, flied out, a board on an error. And they're watching McGee, even though the Dodgers leading by five, they're afraid Willie might still be going. My reaction to that is, so what? All right, where's he going to go? Where's he going to go? Let him go. He's got 31 stolen bases. One and one to Terry Pendleton. his turn on deck is Tommy Herr, the number two hitter in the National League. And in Whitey Herzog's words, the best hitter on the team. That's why he's hitting third. 8-3 Dodgers, bottom of the seventh. Two out. Talk about the best hitter on the team. They've had some dandies in this town. Oh. Whoa. Mr. Musial, of course, comes to mind immediately. One and one. Ground ball to Sachs. He goes to Bream, and so that's it. They get a base hit and nothing else. That by De Jesus. They leave McGee, and at the end of seven, the Dodgers eight and the Cardinals three. Eight three Dodgers in the eighth. Yvonne De Jesus, who batted for Bob Four, stays in the game and bats ninth and plays third base. Neil Allen then would go in the number two slot, the last man to make out, Terry Pendleton. Allen is one and four, ERA of six. He has really been struggling. Ball one. Things got so bad that he was even pitching batting practice, trying to find his way. He appeared very briefly last night and did not have an official hitter in the sense there were no official at-bats, although he did pitch to two hitters was acquired with Rick Owenby from the Mets in the Keith Hernandez deal, and it just hasn't worked. 3-0. Ball four. And the Wolves get on Allen immediately. Shortstop. He simply missed with four fastballs. There was nothing fancy about it. He tried to throw a strike and couldn't. 
He has walked 17 batters and struck out 10. And of course, any time the ratio is that way, you know you're in trouble. Here's Mariano Duncan, had a bunt double, grounded out twice, fly to center. One for four. Strike. When the Cardinals come up in the bottom of the eighth inning, they'll have Tommy Hurd, Jack Clark, Andy Van Slyke. Fouled away, 0-2. Kenny Landro with two home runs today, one of them inside the park. An AstroTurf hop gave him that one. Waiting on deck. Breaking ball hit slowly to Tommy Herr. He has to make an AstroTurf hop to get the out at first. You know, he said an interesting thing. There's a fellow who has had three knee operations. And I asked him the other night, I said, boy, it must be awful playing on AstroTurf with bad legs. He said, no, I'd rather play on AstroTurf than I would on grass. It's actually easier on my legs. Hmm. I couldn't believe that. But he said that the new AstroTurf in St. Louis is more comfortable, and he doesn't have to worry about wet grass or tearing up divots and twisting and falling. But he's, he's happier playing on AstroTurf. Quite a surprise. Very spongy as compared to what used to be here. The big bugaboo is when one of the players drops some gum on the artificial surface. That's the problem. Mm. Gum. Gum. All over the bottom of your shoes. One and oh. I'd like to hear that modern day ball player be thrown out going from first to third. And the manager said, why didn't you make it? It was an easy play. Well, I got gum on my shoes. They're like suction cups yeah. then. Yeah. Tell a guy like Frisch or DeRocher <laughs> Line drive at her. That's the second out. So Guerrero coming up with Dave Anderson standing at second base. Two out in the eighth. Eight to three Dodgers. Guerrero has a single, double, and home run. Pete hitting 307. He is just one of the many players from that small town about which you've heard so much in the Dominican Republic, San Pedro de Macorís, along with his teammate Mariano Duncan and, of course, a neighbor of Joaquin Andujar, just to mention a couple. On-one. No balls and two strikes to Pete. Whitey talks about his bullpen, Herzog does, and he keeps saying, I need Allen. I've got to have somebody like Allen. That's why I've got to keep trying to bring him around. I need him, and he does. Oh, sure. Allen, of course, found himself in a very difficult spot. First of all, he comes here with Keith Hernandez, one of the favorites, being traded away. That's a tough act to follow. Time. No pitch. And then Suter goes away, and right away everybody says, okay, you're the new Bruce Suter. I tell you, I'm as serious as I'll ever get when I say this, but it's so unfair of fans and sports writers and broadcasters and when a guy gets traded to put the onus on the guy to trade it for. You had nothing to do with it. No. Nope. Oh, and two. Curveball hit to the left of Ozzie. He stumbles and remarkably throws and gets him. Only an acrobat could have kept his balance without falling down. At the end of seven and a half, eight three Dodgers. Ozzy Smith, and watch on this play. Even when he stumbles, he looks graceful. Now he loses a hinge there, and his legs go out from under him. Both hands touch the ground, and he's still able to get something on the throw. As you said, Vin, only an acrobat can do that. Yeah, he's remarkable. There's no other word for him. He's sitting next to Vince Coleman who's been sidelined with a bad wrist. A reminder, NBC Sports tomorrow, concluding exclusive coverage of the world's most prestigious tennis tournament with Boris Becker, the 17-year-old upstart from West Germany, the youngest ever to make the finals, the only unseeded player ever to make the finals against Kevin Curran from South Africa, became a United States citizen, went to school at the University of Texas. Well, they'll be competing tomorrow for the game's most coveted prize. 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific on NBC Sports. Tommy Herr flied to left, single to center, had a scoring fly ball, 
So he's one for two, and the Dodgers have rearranged their outfield. The fly ball to the man who started in his position, Kenny Landro. One away. He is bracketed now by Candy Maldonado in right, and R.J. Reynolds has moved over to left. So there's R.J., and there's Candy. Here's Jack Clark. Walked, grounded to third twice. 0 for 2. Kenny Howell throwing back of Welch in the Dodger bullpen. Strike. Welch has made five starts this year. As we mentioned, he had a strained ligament in his right elbow. Change up is popped up foul back a third. Duncan along with Anderson, and it is Duncan. That's the third time the off-speed pitch has gotten Jack Clark. You want to talk about a hitter in St. Louis? Well, who else are you going to talk about? How about this man? How about the All-Star game? And how about a home run? The story that came out of that was that he went up to Yogi and said he was getting tired, but that was at Yankee Stadium, right. that home run. Remember the one he hit in Milwaukee? Extra innings, he said, I'm getting tired, Yogi. I'm going to hit a home run so we can all go home. Stan the man. There's a statue of him outside of Bush Memorial Stadium. There have been magnificent players to play here in St. Louis. I wouldn't even start to mention them. There no. are too many. But to most players, uh, to most people today, if you say Cardinals and baseball, you say music. Andy Van Slyke popped up, fly to center, and tripled, and they left him. That's when it appeared as if the complexion of the game was changing. But then it was rearranged again in the seventh inning, the dramatics of Mike Sosha. A one-hopper flagged by Duncan. So the Dodgers set him down quietly in the eighth. And at the end of eight, the Dodgers eight, the Cardinals three. They also serve who only sit and wait. Vincent Maurice Coleman. Are you listening, Vince? All right, you should be playing. Tell us about your wrist. Which one is it? Which wrist hurts? Which wrist hurts you? He doesn't hear us? Which wrist? No, don't wave. He look like a football player now. That'll teach you to slide head first. <laughs> he doesn't hear us. Sid Bream will start it off. Ball one, one and oh. Bream finishing up for Greg Brock at first base. Dodgers leading eight to three, top of the ninth inning. Fastball fouled away. It's Neil Allen, the fifth Cardinal pitcher. Kepshire, Campbell, Horton, Forsh, and now Neal. Bream, in limited service, had a couple of home runs and was sent back to Albuquerque, tore up the Coast League, and they called him back. One and one. Now one and two. That must be tough. Were you ever sent down? Oh, yes. I went back after the World Series. Oh. You mean you played in the World Series in 46 and then they sent you back? In 48. I played in the World Series in 46. In 47, I was in the big leagues. Went back in 48. That's got to be a difficult transition oh, going down. It is enough fodder for bench jockeys to last you through a, a lifetime. Oh, you mean they get on you, hey, big deal, you're back in the minors, oh, or hey, big leaguer? They really let you have it. I mean, from the time you step on the field, and then uh, in those days, uh, found some resentment on, the, on your own ball club. Oh, really? Oh, how do you ever get to the big leagues? Oh, Father nice. must have owned the candy store. Hmm. Fly ball to straightaway center. McGee is there. One away. I'm sure people don't even stop to think about things like that that happen. But it's a fact of life. It really is. And, and i tell you what it did, though, Vin. It taught me a very important lesson. What's because that? in 46, if you're here in the hometown, they had banquets all over, and everybody was your friend. Everybody telling you how wonderful you are. And you're 20 years old, just came out of the Army, and you figure you, Eisenhower, and MacArthur won the war. <laughs> so you believe everything. When you get sent back to the minor leagues, it's like I had developed leprosy or something. Nobody came around, just my brother, my wife, and the girl I married, and a priest friend of mine. And I found out who my friends were. Mm. A painful lesson. But it carries you in good stead the rest of your life. And it must have made the trip back to the big leagues even more satisfying. Yes, it did. It really did. One out in the ninth. Dodgers eight, Cardinals three. 
It's, it's like when you get bit by the snake, you find out who your friends are. You know that story. <laughs> well, surrounded by his buddies, three outs away from his first complete game of the year. High chopper foul, Ivan de Jesus. Still 0-2. Run 16 hits. The Dodgers tie for the year. Two errors. The Cardinals three runs, six hits, and two errors. 0-2. Oh One ball and two strikes. Reynolds today struck out twice, singled and grounded out, battling Neil Allen, trying to get his act together. Tomorrow will be quite a matchup here. Oral Hershiser and John Tudor. Hershiser contending for an all-star berth. John Tudor, the National League Pitcher of the Month, and he'll be pitching against the National League Player of the Month, Pedro Guerrero. Two and two. Fastball chopped to her. Two down. Her was ready to jump immediately. There we see Hirschheiser, the bulldog, was sort of causing. Catcher Mike Sosha. Doing a little cheerleading right now. Uh, he'll be out there in the sun tomorrow against John Tudor. Tudor is quite a story here in St. Louis. He was one and seven. And you want to talk about a guy that'd go on a complete turnabout, winning seven straight. Although Whitey says that Tudor wasn't pitching that badly at all when he was one and seven. He didn't get a break or two. That's right. And two to Footsie Sosha. Speed merchant. It's all right, Mike. One and two. He is always being teased by his teammates about his size and his nose. Jay Johnstone has a mask with a huge Pinocchio nose attached to it. And every now and then, Jay will put it on and walk out on the field ball back of first and there's Jack Clark and Sosia I think fell down half from exhaustion no no it was trying to get a good jump from home plate that's all right Mike you look good at the end of eight and a half clarinets in St. Louis Mike Sosia today has two doubles and a single he collided with Ozzie Smith at second and he scored from first what does that mean when you're playing late in the game look at this this sums up the heat and exhaustion the weariness of a catcher in St. Louis. <laughs> Boy, that told it all. The Major League Baseball Game of the Week, trying to tell it all, has been brought to you by Honda All-Terrain Vehicles, inventors of the ATC three-wheeler and four tracks four-wheeler, by Miller Beer. Miller made the American way since 1855. By Armor All, it's science, but it works like magic. And by Ford, who invites you to drive the new Ford Escort. Have you driven a Ford lately? Bob Welsh has gotten to the ninth, looking for his first complete game of the year. And Steve Braun lifts a fly ball down the right field line. Maldonado, a long way to come. He's there to one-handed in foul ground. Look at Sid Bream. The first baseman went 300 feet down the line. This week's NBC Light Beer from Miller player of the game is Bob Welsh. Light Beer from Miller is happy to present a check for $1,000 in the name of Bob Welsh to help fight multiple sclerosis. One down in the ninth. This is the seventh meeting between these two teams. They have split the previous six, and they have one to go tomorrow. They have four in Los Angeles starting after the All-Star game. Little fly ball down the line, curling foul, and drops untouched in the bullpen. Bream has to be exhausted now. That's two trips on consecutive pitches from first base into the right field corner. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman. The coordinating producer for NBC Baseball is Harry Coyle. Telecast of today's Game of the Week, produced by George Finkel. Directed by John Gonzalez. Pre-game produced by Les Dennis. Pre-game directed by Mary Buda Lamusio. Technical directors Neil Flagg and Sal Nagita. Now I know why this game was so bizarre. Why? Harry Coyle was here. Harry Watch Coyle, it. he was here. He has seen it all, so they had to give him this one. One and one to Ozzie Smith. Fouled out. 
singled and grounded out. Ground ball to Bream, and he'll do it himself. Two out. Tom Lasorda with Joe Malfitano on his right, Manny Mota on his left. And the Dodgers one out away from making a two out of three from the Cardinals. Here's Welsh's numbers. There's the key, the number of pitches in the heat. He has not made a hundred pitches yet with two out in the ninth inning. Plus excellent control. Ball back a third, fair ball. Anderson to Bream, and that's it. Welsh goes all the way. His first complete game of the year, and a rather remarkable performance it was. Welsh, in going nine, did not strike out a batter, and maybe that's one reason why he did it in a hundred pitches. It's all over. The Dodgers beat the Cardinals eight to three. We'll be back after this. Bob Welch, 99 pitches for the Dodgers to beat the Cardinals 8-3. to three. A reminder, tomorrow, Wimbledon and Sports World. Next week, Joe and I will be in Wrigley Field, Chicago. The Dodgers and the Cubs. Others will see the Giants and the Pirates. But Joe Garagiola, Vin Scully, wishing you a very pleasant good afternoon.